Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Recently, I find myself to be repeating this sentence to myself and those who are close to me. And the sentence goes like, You are not a saint. You don't need to please everyone. I find myself to be at this phase in my life where I am in my villain era. And I just am tired of being Miss Goody Goody and trying to please everyone. And I felt pretty empowered being at where I am right now and I really feel like everyone in this world should just be in their villain era to embrace the bad bitch energy and I remember that this idea first came up when my sister confided to me that she bought a pet dog instead of adopting one and she felt really guilty about it. I know the animal rights activists are all going to come at me and be like, you should adopt, you shouldn't shop. But let's listen to the full story first, okay? At that point, my sister has just moved to China and she was on a spousal visa. She didn't have a job yet. And in China, if you want to adopt a pet dog, you would need to provide them with a lot of documentation, like your letter of employment to prove that you're able to provide for the dog. And I think it's a good initiative for them to do that. But because of that, it made it very hard for my sister to adopt the dog. And they ended up deciding to buy a pet dog. And Even though this dog has been such a beautiful addition to their family, it has really brightened their life, even though it's kind of chaotic, but it's cute and it's all great. But even up to yesterday, when I was talking to my sister about this adopting situation, she told me that she was still feeling guilty and ashamed. And I felt like in her situation, due to the circumstances that she was in, I felt like it is forgivable for her to do something that is not right and just be happy with the choices that you make. And I just feel like we live at this time where cancel culture is big, where everyone is trying to be a social justice warrior and do the right thing in order to not disappoint everyone around us. And I feel like this pressure to constantly people please and do the right thing can be very stressful and a lot for a lot of people. Which is why in today's episode, I really just want to talk to you about embracing this inner bad bitch energy that you have. Because I felt like ever since, I decided to not care too much about pleasing everyone. My life has become a lot better and I really want the same for you. So in this episode, we are going to first explore why we feel the need to people please. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the impact of not setting boundaries. And I am then going to share with you the nine mindset and pattern shifts that you need to have to embrace your inner bad bitch. This is going to make your life a lot better. It's going to be a good one. So I'm really looking forward to get started. So why do we people please? Number one, it definitely might stem from something that is more internal. Maybe you are someone who struggles with low self-esteem or low self-worth. You feel like you are not confident with the decisions that you make and you are worried that you are going to get judged or even hated by the ones that you love. So you choose to just people please do the things as they like so that you don't risk any conflict with anyone else you just want to seek validation from them you want to be the person that everyone loves i totally understand that on the other hand generally as humans we have always want to be thought as the good person when we were growing up in school or maybe when you were raised in a religious household or an organization 
we are always taught to do what is morally right, to help other people, to be kind to one another. And the key is so that we don't grow up to be assholes or criminals. And I think that's good. But I feel like thanks to social media, thanks to the digital age that we are in right now, everyone is free to express their opinions about things. And if you do something wrong, people are very confident to call you out and judge you. We have all seen the videos of Karens getting called out or you know, celebrities or content creators being cancelled for the things that they did. And sure, most of the times, they are assholes or criminals who did something wrong. But I just feel like with social media being around, with everybody having a camera on their phone, I just felt like I am constantly being looked upon and spied at. And I have to be very careful with every single move that I make. And so it is better to just be a people pleaser and not do the wrong thing. And so we constantly please and please and please. But what happens when we do not set the boundaries and people overstep them? So number one, you are bound to get a burnout because you are too afraid when you say no that people are going to think that you are rude or you're not a nice person. So you keep saying yes to doing things that maybe you don't want to do. And when you keep saying yes to everything, when you keep showing up even when you don't want to, when you keep smiling even when you're unhappy, you are going to get so tired and burnt out from just being nice to everyone and not being nice to yourself. And because of that, you are going to start growing this resentment towards the people that you did not say no to. Perhaps in your mind, you would start thinking like, why do they always do things like that? Why do I have to do things your way? Who do you think you are? I don't need to please you. Like there's going to be a lot of resentment towards this person that perhaps you actually really cared and loved towards, but because they've been crossing that boundaries, there's that resentment. And as a result, when you are constantly being in that negative energy, when you're always tired, when you're always having so much resentment towards the person, your mental health is definitely going to get compromised. And that is why it is so important to set boundaries. Because as much as people liking us can create a harmonious environment on the outside, if you are not having any peace on the inside with your life, Don't you think that it's problematic? Like people pleasing is not actually making things better, even though there's no conflict on the outside, but there's a lot of conflict on the inside. And this is why we have to stand up for yourself to embrace our bad bitch energy. And I'm not saying that, you know, you have to be actually a very bad bitch. Like, okay, I don't mean that you have to do it at the expense of hurting others and bringing them discomfort. Like, you don't need to actually be a villain villain. But embracing your bad bitch energy, it's really about asserting yourself confidently and respectfully. And I'm going to use the pronouns she, her to describe a bad bitch in my next part. But just know that this is all for aesthetic purpose because it just sounds good to say that you are embracing your bad bitch energy. She is a bad bitch. But if you are a guy and if you are listening to this episode, you can also embrace your bad bitch energy, okay? You don't need to identify as a girl to embrace your bad bitch energy. I just thought that it sounds good. So number one, a bad bitch knows who she is and what she wants. In order for you to identify what your boundaries are, you need to first get to know yourself. You need to know what are your values, what are the things that you like, what are the things that you don't like, what can you accept, what can you not accept. And when you know all of these things about yourself, you can then identify where the limit is for you. You need to stop gaslighting yourself and start to Listen, understand your own needs. And in order for you to do that, you need to start spending more time with yourself. Instead of saying yes to spending time with all your friends to people, please take that time and spend it with yourself 
Perhaps you can take yourself on a walk without talking to other people. Start journaling, start meditating. Go inwards and figure out what is it that is in your mind. Ask yourself questions like, what do I like? What are my values in my life? What do I want in my life? When you get to know yourself, it would make it a lot easier for you to figure out where the line is. Perhaps if there are people that has been constantly been crossing your boundaries, when you ask yourself this question, it would make it a lot easier for you to realize a lot of things that you have not realized before. And if you are someone who is not comfortable with being by yourself to journal or meditate, perhaps then you can get the help of your loved ones to kind of get to know yourself better. Perhaps you can talk to your partner or your friends about your personality, about what they think about you, what they feel like you should do in certain situations. You can also talk it out with a friend or even with a therapist if you need to. But the key is this, you need to start spending more time into figuring out who you are and what you want. Secondly, a bad bitch educates herself. If you don't know something, learn about it. Make use of Google, of ChatGPT. You know, watch all the free content online that you can search. If you don't know what a boundary is, Google it. If you don't know how much you should be getting paid at your job, do your research. Check out certain websites. Because here's the thing. The more you educate yourself, the more you know about the facts about this world, the more you know about what you want because you've learned about the facts about this world. And that is going to give you the confidence to stay true to yourself because you know what you want is rightfully yours and it makes it easier for you to stay true to your boundaries, to stop people pleasing and to do what you want in your life. Number three, a bad bitch is confident and she believes in herself. Confidence is not something that you are born with. Confidence is built. People always tell me, Wendy, I wish I'm as confident as you. I am not born like that. I can't do this. I cannot speak on stage. I cannot record myself in front of the video and put myself out there on the social media. Like it's impossible for me. But guess what? The fact that I am so confident right now it's true years of practice. I was not born like that. When I started my YouTube channel in 2017, I told myself that this is going to be a practice ground for me to improve my public speaking skills. And it's true the repeated practice in the last six years minimum, not including the days in my school where I was trained to speak in the public and all that stuff like that, that I am where I am right now. The podcast that you are listening today, I tried to record last night, but I failed. And then it is, let's see what time is it? It is 7 a.m. right now and I'm here recording again because I didn't do well and I wanted to do better. And so I woke up early and repeated the exact same thing again. I am still in no way perfect. I just keep on practicing and practicing to become more confident in myself and in my voice and in the work that I do. You need to believe in yourself. You need to give yourself this chance to tell yourself that you are worth it. You don't need to get validation from the people around you. You are just enough. Number four, a bad bitch communicates her boundaries. I know this term setting boundaries is more normalized in recent years but for most of us, it's not something that we grow up listening to. And it's just not really a part of our culture when we were growing up. So I did a little bit of research about what a personal boundary is. So according to Psych Central, personal boundaries are simply the lines we draw for ourselves in terms of our level of comfort around others. So basically, anytime when you are engaging with someone else, you are likely going to have a personal boundary that surround that situation. And most of the times, they are not communicated. This boundary is just there. And usually, we only realize its existence 
when someone cross it and you realize that, wait, someone has crossed the line here. Someone has crossed the limit. And boundaries can be in many different forms. It can be a physical boundary when someone crosses your space. It can be an emotional boundaries or time, material, sexual workplace. It can be in many form. And I'm just going to give you a few examples. Imagine that you are in a line in a grocery store and the person behind you is standing really, really close to you to the point that you can feel his breath. That person has crossed your physical boundaries because it's making you very uncomfortable. He's being physically too close to you. And when you realize that, you need to just take a step forward and create that space within you again. Another example is on emotional boundary. Perhaps it's the way that your friend talked to you. They made you feel belittled or they made you feel that you are being taken for granted. And when they cross the line, you might need to communicate that, hey, what you're doing is not cool. I don't like it when you say such things about me and I need you to stop doing that. That is when you set an emotional boundary. Or maybe you can also have material boundaries in your workplace. So I have this colleague who is kind of OCD and he is very particular about his stationaries on his desk. You know how in office we might sometimes loan pens or certain stationaries from one another when we need to sign certain documents, right? There is this one guy in my office who is like so particular whenever someone takes something from him and he would also be like please return it to my desk and if you don't do that if you don't put it in the same space he would get angry at you and he would complain about it and I thought it's kind of funny but I think it's a very good example of a material boundary when someone takes your thing you should always respect the boundary for someone else so yes a bad bitch communicates her boundaries When she knows herself, when she knows where is the limit, she is not afraid to communicate her boundary, to let people know that so that she can protect her space in the way that is within her own limits. Number five, a bad bitch is unafraid to be different. Maybe you are worried about being a bad bitch because you feel like what you want to do It is different from what everyone else is doing. And because your brain is constantly in a protective mechanism to make sure that you're not doing the wrong thing, it is telling you that different is danger. But you need to know this. Different doesn't mean that it is bad. Different doesn't mean that it is wrong. Different just means that you are embracing this gift that you are given in this world. Can you imagine if we all dress up the same, if we all do the same work, if we all like the same things and eat the same things? Like, oh my God, are we robots or what? (laughs) We are all designed with our own personalities, our own strengths, our own preferences. And it is okay to be different from one another. If anything, You can only stand out and live to your true potential when you start embracing all these gifts that you are given. Number six, a bad bitch is unafraid of making mistakes. Just because you have educated yourself, just because you have learned and understand yourself and become more confident, it doesn't mean that you are going to be a superhuman and that everything that you are going to do is going to be right and correct. You are bound to make mistakes in your journey. And when you do it, you apologize, you learn from it, and you grow from it. A person who stubbornly denies that they are wrong is not a bad bitch. That is just plain stupid. A bad bitch is someone who knows herself and speaks up for herself, but she also gives space to others to speak and she listens to them and she learns from them. And if she realizes that she's wrong, she's going to admit her mistakes. Because a bad bitch knows that making a mistake is not the end of the world. Mistakes are how we are going to learn and grow as human beings and those are not the worst thing in the world. Think about it. When it comes to work, 
there are going to be times that maybe you get a number wrong on an Excel or maybe you just say something that crossed the line when you are being emotional and you know that it's upset someone. When that happens, you just need to apologize and learn from it and move on. It would be so stupid if you were to just going to cling on to your ego or hold on to the grudge about someone because at the end of the day, it is just work. You still need to show up and see this person in your life. So why not just move on from it? Number seven, a bad bitch knows that she is not for everyone. The fact that I decided to name this episode Embracing Your Bad Bitch Energy and literally repeated the word bad bitch throughout it, I already know that this is going to make some people uncomfortable. But I also learned that this is my life and I want things to be my way and that I am just not for everyone. Those people who have boundaries about swearing, I'm sorry that I might have crossed your boundary, but this is within my boundary and I want to say things certain way because I like the sound of it, because I like the energy that comes with it. And so I'm going to do things my way. And that's what I want to remind you as well, is that this is your life. It is not your parents. It is not your partners. It is not your friend. You should be living life in your own terms and not for everyone else because you don't want to regret only when you're older that you did not do lives in your own terms, that you only did things for others and not yourself. Remember, this is your life. Number eight, a bad bitch practices self-care. As you grow older, you are going to change. You are going to realize things about yourself that no longer serves you. For example, maybe in your early 20s, you used to love partying with your friends on Friday nights. You used to love getting drunk and doing stupid things. But as you get older, your body just can't take it anymore. And maybe you have some friends who still enjoy partying and are always asking you out. But you realize that it's no longer for you. And when that happens... You need to let them know that perhaps you prefer to spend time doing something else, something that is more nourishing for your soul. Perhaps you crave deeper connection with people and you'd rather stay in and still drink some alcohol maybe, but you want to talk and you want to chill. You need to be able to communicate yourself. You need to prioritize your own self-care. And if your friend cannot accept for you wanting to prioritize your own needs, perhaps it's time for you to reconsider this friendship and this relationship. Because in life, you need to know that we are going to outgrow some people as well. Number nine, a bad bitch is a work in progress. She keeps on healing and growing to become a better version of yourself. You are not going to be able to embrace your inner bad bitch energy overnight. It is going to be a process. You will have to let go of a lot of old patterns and beliefs to become the person that you really want to be. And there are still going to be days where you feel guilty for setting boundaries. There are still going to be days where you don't feel good and you are going to get discouraged. Because here's the thing, when you are healing when you are growing and when you are moving towards a life that you dream of, there are a lot of changes that is going to happen and changes are not going to be comfortable. Our body is made to feel safe when things are the same because that's what it perceived to be a safe space. But when you want to grow out of your comfort zone, when you want to become a better person, when you want to upgrade your life to live that dream life that you want, it is actually really, really uncomfortable. And you need to know that. You need to remember that you are a work in progress and the journey to becoming a bad bitch, the journey to living your dream life, it is not an easy one, but that doesn't mean that it is a bad one. You just need to learn to embrace the fact that you are a work in progress. You need to learn to embrace the journey and you are going to be just fine. So that's all that I have for you. 
I hope that it gives you some encouragement to really just embrace your inner bad bitch, to do things the way that you want, to assert yourself, but still being respectful to other people. And I hope that this gives you the courage to stop people pleasing and start living life in your own terms. Remember, you are not trying to be a saint. You are just a normal human being and you don't need to please everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give it a 5-star rating on Spotify or give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Better yet, it would be great if you can screenshot this and share it into your Instagram stories so that more people can learn from it and can be inspired to be their own bad bitch. I will see you in my next episode. And this is goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. bye. <laughs>